Okay, I got a big video for you guys today. Are rent prices falling off of a cliff? If you're a real estate investor, are you about to see huge vacancies or drops in rent prices? Look at this chart over here. This is a chart of what they say rent prices are doing right now. Uh, this is the number that they use for rent to calculate the consumer price index, which is about 40% of the consumer price index, which is what they use to decide if inflation is going up, going down, if there's hyperinflation, it's all tied. This is one of the biggest indicators in the consumer price index is rent prices. And this is what they say they're doing. So if you're a real estate investor, this is going to be an important topic to talk about. You need to know how this works, how to calculate these numbers. So let's get into it right now. But if this is your first time here, this is the Retirement Mentality channel. This is a place where I'm going to change your mentality about retirement. I want to change the way you think about money. Because at the end of the day, that's why we're investing in real estate or starting businesses or investing in the stock market or ETFs or whatever it is that you do. And the reason that you're on this channel, we want to get to that magic number of retirement. Really, it's more about financial independence. I want to change the name of the FIRE movement to Financial Independence Recreational Employment because I don't think people in their 30s and 40s really want to retire. They don't want to worry about money. They want to be financially free so that we can get recreational employment to do what we want. We still want to make money, but we want to do it in fun ways and ways that matter to the planet or to the earth or to your family members or to society or just because you think it's fun. So that's really what we want to achieve on this channel. So if you like that and you haven't been here before, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Those are the topics we talk about. So let's dig into this right now. Okay, I got my laptop here with me while I talk because I'm going to refer to a few different websites, to some graphs, to some articles. So this first uh, graph here, this is really what caught my attention. This rent graph showing that rent prices are going off a cliff. But I want to back up a little bit before we get too far into this graph. I don't want to make this a class on the consumer price index, but I want to talk a little bit about how they calculate the numbers because I didn't know some of this information until I started digging into this after I saw this graph. So I just want to hit some of the high points on this article about how the consumer price index is calculated and how the numbers relate to inflation and where this rent number actually comes from. So I'm going to start with this article from Real Estate Tipster. His website is retipster.com. This is a really good article that explains how, how the CPI is calculated, how it re relates to inflation. I'll put a link down below to this article. But I'll just read a little bit from it here quickly. It says the CPI gauges how the economy is currently performing and how it helps the government make policy decisions. It measures, it's a measure of the buying power of the, of the country's unit of currency and may even provide a partial data to the cost of living index. It's done by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. The Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor and Statistics rolls out the CPI every month using this data. The government can pin the aggregate price level of the economy and chart inflation Businesses also use CPI to know how much they can adjust the salaries of workers, plan expansions, or set benchmarks for growth in the next quarter. So that's really why businesses look at it and investors look at it to look at what rent prices are doing also. It goes into some complicated formulas of how they, count, how they calculate the CPI, um, but basically it boils down to the data is collected from 75 urban areas in the country which spans 5,000 houses and 22,000 retailers, either via personal visits or by phone calls. So they're calling households and businesses and they're asking them, how much do you spend on this? How much do you spend on this? Do you spend more? Do you spend less than you did last month, last year? And a lot of it is derived from just asking consumers. There's also two types of CPI. There's the CPIU, which is for urban areas, and there's the CPIW, which is for wage earners, people who get paid uh, like by the hour, cashiers, clerical people, um, that, so they calculate that in two different ways. And then they, and then they basically take an average between the CPIU and the CPIW to come up with these calculations. And then they break it down further by region. They have the U.S. city average, they have the West region, the mountain plains, the Midwest, the Southwest, the Southeast, the Mid-Atlantic, New York, New Jersey, and New England. Those are the seven ways that they split it up. Okay, and then the article goes on because this is written by a real estate guy. I'm a real estate guy, so he goes on to say, CPI, CPIs are useful for real estate investors, particularly those who own and run rental properties. Higher CPIs may mean that rents need to increase to keep up with inflation. A stagnant rental rate will allow the landlord to buy less of the market basket, and the CPI increases year over year. In general, rent and CPR are directly proportional as the cost of living increases in an area, so do rent and CPI. The rent costs in bigger cities or urban areas are significantly higher compared to the properties 
that are located in less populated areas, bigger cities have a higher cost of living, while rural towns have lower, so rent follows suit. That's pretty obvious. So that's a brief uh, introduction to the consumer price index and how it's calculated and where the numbers come from. Now this is where it really starts to get interesting. I'm gonna take you into another article. This one is written by First American. They are the big title company. If you've ever closed a loan, you've probably gone through First American title. And this is entitled, Housing Inflation is Not What You Think It Is. And so he starts off by saying, one of the most closely watched indicators of inflation is the consumer price index, which jumped 4.2% year over year in April, the fastest pace that most economists anticipated and was the result of base effects combined with numerous supply chain bottlenecks driving up prices as the economy reopens. Okay, so we know all of that. He goes on to say that rent prices are calculated into the CPI index and it's about 40% of the index. I'll pop a infographic in here that shows a graph of where all of the different airline, uh, transportation, food and beverage, clothing, rent. I'll just pop an infographic in here that shows the percentages of what uh, goes into calculating the CPI index. Okay, so he goes on to say that the housing market is divided into two rented and owned housing. Figuring out the price of rented housing is simple. It's the amount paid every month by the tenant in form of rent. The cost of owned housing is less straightforward. What the Bureau of Labor Statistics is trying to measure with the CPI is the cost of consuming housing as shelter every month. That's why home prices are not used. The Bureau of Labor Statistics considers that a home, BLS considers the home a real estate asset and therefore an investment, not a consumption good. Instead, the BLS uses an owner's equivalent rent, OER, and the BLS estimates the OER by asking homeowners how much they could charge for rent for renting their homes. This sentence is what is important here. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, estimates the OER, that's the owner's uh, equivalent rent, by asking homeowners how much they could charge for rent. So they ask homeowners how much they think they could get for rent. The problem is most homeowners don't have a clue what they could get for rent. They're not in the renting business, so they just make up a guess, and usually they guess the same thing they guessed previously. So if they're asking these homeowners every month, they say, I'll probably get what I got last month. And if they're asking them every year, they might say, oh, I could get maybe $100 more than I could get last year. So rent prices usually stay very steady for this calculation because they're asking uneducated, not that they're uneducated, they're uneducated on this topic about rent because they don't rent their houses. They're saying, what could you rent? I don't know, I could get 1,500, I could get 1,000. So that's why this number usually stays pretty flat. And now it's going down because most people think the economy is doing worse. So they are predicting that maybe they'd get a little bit less rent than they did last year. So this is not, indicative of what kind of rent people are actually paying or what investors are actually getting. It's a made up number that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses by asking people how much they could get for rent. So now when we go back to this graph that I popped up at the very beginning of the video and you can see that rents are going down, that's because this comes from the data of the Bureau of Labor Statistics just asking homeowners how much they think they could rent their house for. I got a new laptop and it's really heavy. I had to put it down, sorry. This graph is actually from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, but I found a good website where somebody took all these graphs and packaged them all together. And that website is called yardeni.com, Y-A-R-D-E-N-I.com. I'll put a link down below. So if you want to look at all these graphs, this last graph that I'm going to put up here is I think the most important one. This shows uh, the consumer price index with and without the rent being added in. So they're selling us that the uh, inflation, the consumer price index inflation report is at about 5%. You can see the blue line is at 5%. And then you exclude the rent and then it all of a sudden jumps up to six. So it goes up one point higher. That I think really is the main point of the whole thing. They're using sort of a made up number for the consumer price index of what people think they could get for rent for their houses. When you take that out, inflation numbers already just spike up one more percent. The last article that I'll pull up here is from USA Today and it's titled, Rental Prices Reach the Highest Level in Two Years, Young Adults Are Setting Out on Their Own Again. This article is from June 18th. I won't read this article to you guys. You guys can go read it yourself. I'll put a link down below to the usatoday.com where this article came from. The point of it is that rental prices are at all time highs right now. So using them into the consumer price index is kind of misleading for what inflation is really doing. 
So I'm sorry for the little clickbaity title at the beginning that rent prices are crashing and flowing off of a cliff, but that's what the data is showing in the CPI index. So I wanted to dig into it so to show you guys what's really happening with the CPI index, with inflation, and with rent prices. So if you're an investor, I know that prices are high. I'm still telling people to go out and buy. That's my advice. I'm looking for property myself right now. There's still deals out there. And I predicted 18 months ago when this whole thing started that there was not going to be a real estate crash. And people told me I was stupid and now prices are up. And this article we just read in Phoenix and Austin, prices are up 25%. So if you live in those places and you were waiting on the sidelines and you didn't believe me, now you gotta pay 25% more. And it's at least 10% across the country. All real estate is local, that's what I always say. But if you're waiting on the sidelines, things are not getting any cheaper. I don't see a crash coming anytime soon. So if you're an investor, it's still a good time to buy. I always say the best time to buy real estate was yesterday and the second best time is today. This was a little bit different kind of video. I don't, about the inflation and these numbers. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And we'll talk more about how to change your retirement mentality so that we can all reach financial independence. Thanks for watching.